Hello, everyone. I think we're going to get this webinar started. So I'd like to first welcome everyone to our webinar today. Uh, we're going to give you a kind of an overview of uh, estimating and uh, estimating with estimating software. My name is Derek Delacuadri. I'm the Director of Marketing for Vision InfoSoft, and I've been here since 2001. Uh, we are producing a series of these webinars, so you'll have to check back uh, for more. And they're geared to help electrical contractors like you learn more about the latest estimating technology and best practices. I'd like to introduce our webinar presenter today, Brian Hoffelder. He's been our estimating and training consultant, as well as our software development manager since 1993. Uh, I also, uh, before I turn it over to Brian, I'd like to bring to your attention the uh, the fact that you can ask questions by using the questions module here on the GoToWebinar control panel. That's up your upper right hand corner of your screen. So Brian, please take it away. Good morning everyone. This is Brian, Brian Hoffelder. I'm going to give you a little presentation today on electrical estimating. You can see a, a, an electrical blueprint here with a power plant here. We're going to come back to this a couple times during the presentation today. The first thing I wanted to touch on is just some general discussion of estimating methods. So I'm going to bring up a little PowerPoint slide here. I've been working with uh, electrical estimators now for 20 plus years and I've seen and been exposed to just about every kind of estimating method and approach that you could imagine. I've seen the people that are extremely detailed, the people that are very general, uh, people that are fast, people that are slow, and all kinds of estimating methods in between. And I wanted to kind of summarize them for you. You know, I, pr I think probably the most basic approach to estimating is, is pricing things by the square foot. Now, that actually has some viability in, in limited situations, but, but the idea basically is that based on the square footage of the building and based on some historical information, you would have a price that you would use for the electrical based on the square footage of the building. And obviously, the, that's a limited approach, but it does work in some situations. So, you know, if you have a good amount of experience bidding, let's say, residential projects, and you know that your cost is X dollars, <coughs> excuse me, for a 2,000 square foot house. Um, you not only know that the, the next 2,000 square foot house is going to be about the same, but if it's 10% bigger, it's going to be about 10% more. If it's 10% smaller, it's going to be about 10% less. So if you have good historical data and you're comparing very, very similar projects, you can bid things by the square foot. <coughs> excuse me. That obviously does not work real well in any kind of a commercial or industrial application. We have to have something a lot more sophisticated to do that. The next step up, you know, as far as a more sophisticated, accurate approach is what is often referred to as unit pricing or flat rate pricing. That's where, again, based on historical data, you've come up with an average cost to install certain types of light fixtures, switches, receptacles, etc. And again, as long as we're comparing very similar projects, we can we can fairly quickly price a project that way. Uh, the problem is obviously that uh, the price for a 2 by 4 lay-in in one situation where we've got two fixtures in the room versus another situation where we've got 50 in the room could vary quite a bit. So the unit pricing or flat rate pricing, although it's a quick way to do bidding, again, it's got very limited application. The best, most accurate way to do estimating is to come up with a complete material takeoff. In other words, an itemized list of all the materials we need to do the electrical installation, a list of all the conduit wire fittings, boxes, etc. Now, whether we do that with assemblies or items, uh, that's, that's another thing we'll have to talk about here today. But basically the idea is we need to count and measure every symbol on the drawings. So if we flip back to that drawing we looked at a minute ago, we would need to do a count of all the symbols on this drawing, and we need to measure all the wiring related to them. Let's see. So that's what we call a, a count and measurement approach, where we list all the materials, and then we assign a price and labor unit to each item. 
So what we're going to end up with is a result is going to look like a spreadsheet like this. Whether we get to this spreadsheet by doing it manually, but the idea is we have to have a complete list of material. There's three quarter inch EMT, we've got a footage, a quantity, a price we've assigned to it, $34.22 per hundred. That's the total cost of that material item. And then a labor unit assigned to each item. So we would come up with a complete list of material based on our takeoff. And the end result would be a total for the dollars of material down here, $43,953, and a total of number of hours of labor, 2,495 hours of labor. So that's the basic goal of, of a complete estimate. The problem is if you don't have a system of doing this that uh, facilitates it, we could be spending a lot of time just listing out materials one item at a time. Again, whether you do it on a piece of paper or a spreadsheet, it's a very tedious process. So let's go back to our one of the things we want to show you here today is that using software to do this process is the same oops, wrong button, sorry is the same as doing it by hand. Keep hitting the wrong button, sorry. You still have to count and measure. Now whether you count and measure with a set of blueprints or whether you do it electronically, that's an option you have today. We'll talk about that briefly at the end. Instead of counting and measuring from a actual set of blueprints, we can bring it up on the screen and do the counting and measuring. And then your estimating software does all the rest. It does all the pricing and labor. So let, let's just show you how this works rather than try to explain it. I'm sorry. So here's my takeoff. From that plan I just showed you a minute ago, I've counted all the symbols. I've got 54 20 amp receptacles, two 20 amp GFI receptacles, quad receptacles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I've counted and measured all the symbols on that plan. And I'll just flip back to that plan here again. So that's the takeoff from this plan. Now I'm going to show you how to input that into the software and what the end result is. So there's only 15 entries here, so bear with me. This is the electrical bid manager software. I'm going to open up this job. Oops, sorry, wrong job. Uh, and I'm going to go into the takeoff. And I'll just repeat my entries here because I know you can't see them on my other screen. I'm going to start with the 54 20 amp duplex receptacles. That's under receptacles, flush, wood or metal stud, duplex, and then 20 amp spec grade in a plastic plate. Quantity is 54. So right here you see part of the benefit of doing this on a computer is that the computer automatically generates the materials you'll see down here in the bottom of the screen for that assembly. The 20 amp spec grade duplex receptacles. So we're going to enter some more receptacles here. We're going to do the GFIs, two of those. We're going to do a quad receptacle next, 15 of those. A single receptacle, and again 20 amp, two of those. Next, we're going to do a manual starter. That's a little bit different item. We're going to go down to a different part of the program called distribution, starters. I'm going to pick the type. It's a toggle manual starter. NEMO 1 enclosure. We've got seven of those. The telephone and data outlets. 
are under telephone and data outlets. We're going to do a flush outlet box with the conduit stub. And we're going to put in 30 of those. Next, we're going to enter some, enter some MC cable for the branch wiring. We're going to put in 810 feet of 12-2. 54 runs, 54 outlets that are wired with 12-2. And then we're going to put in some 12-3. Four hundred and five feet, twenty seven runs. Now we're going to do some of the home runs in conduit in EMT. So here we're going to do three quarter inch EMT with five number twelves. We're going to do a total of five hundred feet, ten runs, ten home runs at fifty foot apiece. And I'm also going to add a junction box for each of those home runs. Ten of those. Just a few more entries here. Now we need some runs. If you remember on the drawing, there were some mechanical equipment. There was a disconnect for a boiler unit and a disconnect for the air handler unit. So we're going to do the home runs first. We're going to do three quarter inch EMT with four number tens. That was just a 30-foot run. And then for the air handler unit, it was one inch EMT with three number sixes and one number 10. That was about 70 feet. We're going to use a different support here. We're going to use a beam clamp. And we're going to put in some elbows. To put in some makeup wire. And just a couple more items here. We're going to take off the safety switches, the disconnects under distribution, safety switches. We're going to do one for the boiler. It's going to be 240 volt general duty fusible EMA 1, 30 amp 3 pole. And for the fuses, 30 amp fuses. One of those, and then the air handler unit, that's going to be a 60 amp 3-pole with 60 amp fuses. And finally, we're going to pick up two motor hookups, motor connections for those safety switches for the mechanical. That's back in wire and conduit, motor hookups. I'm going to use one of the pre-made assemblies here for three-quarter inch with four number tens. One of those. And we're going to use another pre-made assembly for the one inch with three sixes and a ten. Okay. So within really just a few minutes there, we entered the entire takeoff for this blueprint. Now, I know that to do that process manually, to, imp to write up a material list and assign pricing and labor to all those items would take most people at least an hour or two, and that's pretty conservative. So here's what happens in EBM now with that information we just input. We go to reports, job extension, and then we go to that spreadsheet we mentioned earlier. So there's the entire material breakdown for that little job we just input, or that, at least that one portion of the job. Again, every item has the quantity, the price, extended price, labor, and extended labor. So down here at the bottom, we've got total material, $2,600. Total labor for that one page, 148 hours. Now, if you need to or wish to modify the pricing. Let's say, for example, I want to change the price of my three-quarter inch EMT. I want to knock it down to $40 per hundred. That's all you do. 
So I can make adjustments on this spreadsheet to the quantity, the price, or the labor. And I'll refresh that when I'm done. So here's my total material, 2667, my total hours of labor. And then if I want to summarize that, put it into a final total. There's the $2,600. I've got my sales tax set to 7 and, a half, seven and three quarters percent. I've got my labor rate set to 27. These are all variables that each user would set up ahead of time. This labor rate would reflect cost, not what we're charging the customer, because down here we can put overhead and profit. So I've got pre-assigned overhead of 10%. I'm going to bump the profit up to 10%. So the total price of the material labor on that one little sheet we just did is $8,339. Again, that's all accomplished in a pretty quick, easy method with as much detail as you could possibly want in the material breakdown. Now, the nice part of the, about the material breakdown, too, is I can now order material. I can bring up a report. And this report can be either printed and faxed and sent out to your wholesalers to get pricing or availability. We can also save this as a PDF file and send it electronically. Now, in today's software world, pretty much everything can be done electronically. There's no reason to have to print out things, either to do the reports printed out or to even do the, the prints, uh, have them printed out. Let me just show you a quick little look at how you would do this electronically. Here's our blueprint again. <clears throat> um, let's see. Okay, so we're going to set up a new job here. We'll just call it web demo. We're going to electronically export this job to the on-screen takeoff. This is creating a file that we're going to use when we go to the, the on-screen takeoff program. We call it OST, where we're going to do an electronic takeoff. So here we're going to open up that job. And then we're going to tell it what drawings or what sheet numbers we want to use. So I'm just going to bring in the one page for now. So there's that same drawing I just did the takeoff from. If I want to electronically do my takeoff, I can pick the assembly over here. This is the same 20 amp receptacle I took off a few minutes ago. And then I can just count them. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I don't know how big your screen is. And we can just click through and count all those receptacles. So there's what I've counted to 16 receptacles so far. If I want to count a different receptacle or a different assembly like a quad, then I can count those. <coughs> At any point you want to transfer that information back into the estimating program, we just go back into the estimating program, we hit import. And those two entries are ready to be taken off. Let me show you one a quick example of how you would measure. I'm going to measure the home run <coughs> excuse me, for this safety switch back to the panel. Now, if I don't know what my scale is, the first thing I want to do is check the scale. And it says here. Let's say we've got a three-foot door opening there. Let me back that up. 
We'll zoom in a little bit first. So the scale of my drawings needs to be adjusted here. I'm going to tell it to calculate the scale. And we'll say that distance we know is going to be 3 feet. OK, so now we're ready to measure. And again, we're going to measure from this air handler unit up to the panel PP2. So we're going to go and select from the branch EMT, 1 inch EMT with 3 number 6s and number 10. So I'm going to scale straight up, come over to the right. And I'm going to add 15 feet to the end. So now we're at 61 feet. Now back to EVM. We hit refresh. And this is the same screen you saw a minute ago when I manually typed in those numbers. We can add a couple of elbows, a different support, and take off. So again, you can do all the takeoff right there on the screen. You don't have to print it out. You don't have to pay for the cost of printing the drawings. And maybe almost as importantly, there's no wait. You don't have to pick them up or have them delivered. You just download them and start your takeoff. And let me show you one more thing in the electronic takeoff. We have a feature called Auto Count. I'm going to pull up another drawing for that. I'm going to use the auto count feature to count these recessed down lights here. Now we know there's a bunch of them on the drawing. We're going to go to fixture saved assemblies. We've got a recessed compact fluorescent down light. And we're going to put under the notes field the type A from the fixture schedule. And the tool we're going to use here is called auto count. And we're going to tell it to search for that symbol, the, look for exactly those pixels on the drawing. And now it's going to go through the whole floor plan and count up that fixture. Gives you a quick little preview mode just so you can verify that what it counted is correct. We're going to hit accept count. Go back to the full page. And it's marked off all those fixtures. Now back in the EBM program, we select that to put it into the takeoff. We can add in things like the lamps. We can even add a fixture whip in. And again, if we were to run the report at this point, it would look similar to what we had before, just not as many items not yet. So there's your conduit, quantity, price, labor unit, totals down here. Now this takeoff's not complete yet, but I just wanted you to see that you could do this electronically rather than doing it manually. So I think that's going to wrap up for now. Uh, Derek, do we have any questions? Um, no, we don't right now, actually. Um, but if anybody does have a question after the webinar or after you viewed the recorded version of this webinar, be sure to email us or, or visit our website. Um, it's always available. Or call us. At, you can uh, call us, and we're, oh, we'll be here to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Brian, for doing the webinar today. You're welcome. Let us know if you have any questions or we can be of any help. Thank you.